Hey, what's up guys? Locally Lost Lapidary here. Today is gonna to be another electroforming day. As you can see, we got a lot of pieces to make. I'm gonna have Emily help me just a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a long day. Let's look at a couple of these pieces. Uh, these are all the pieces that we did this past week. So we have the Fire Agate Trio here, looking good. Uh, all these pieces of Malachite, you know, this is gonna be a ring. This is gonna be, I don't know. <laughs> we'll get there though. This is gonna be a nice pendant. This is gonna be a ring too. Pendant. I'm gonna set these on a nice bar right here. Two gorgeous pendants. Then we have that red jasper right here. That's gonna make a gorgeous pendant. I'm gonna set this in a circle, like a copper circle, set it like that sitting there. Here's the emerald. Uh, same deal in that copper circle. It's gonna be like a teardrop shape coming up like that. And the uh, lapis right here, just a traditional border with the hook. So I'm gonna do a little variety this time. I'm gonna throw in the copper teardrop circle y'all haven't seen. And then I'm gonna go ahead and set this on a bar. Y'all haven't seen that either. But all right, uh, when Emily gets here, I'll show y'all how to get that started, how to get that circle started. All right, see you soon. All right, guys, so same thing. Um, I already have this a little part of this flattened out from last time. I'm just gonna go ahead and burn off. This is 12 gauge. So I'm just gonna loop it, cut a couple pieces off here, just like that. Take my twirlers here. I know they have a, a real name. Emily, do you know what these are really called? No. I, don't, <laughs> I just call them my twirlers, because they look twirly. Go ahead and bend that up just like that. And basically, I'm just gonna burn off. Oh, there's only like two more left in here. I'm gonna do like a smaller one. And Emily's gonna show us how to make these circles that are, I don't know why I have such a hard time making them. I think it's cause my hands are so fat. I don't know. Maybe I'm just making up excuses and I just want Emily to do stuff. <laughs> but, uh, oh, got one last one right here. I'll make a smaller one with this one. See how it has a different grade gradients there. And 12 gauge works perfect for making these wheels, seriously. It's a really good size. And when I cut it, I just like kind of put the cleave going up like at an angle you know like that right there and it comes out with a little bit hanging off the side like that and just put it behind like that all right and here comes Emily I'll get the kit here what are you gonna wrap around and wrap around that bottle yep. So just put it like that. You use your thumb to hold it in place on one side and you wrap it around and you do a little bit over like that. And ta da, you got a circle. How's it look? Is it bent or anything? Yeah. It's good. Good, really. And then you just clip it kind of in the middle. Nice. Let me see. Let's check it out. spot on it. I don't know what that is. That's good. Now and we're gonna. Is it too big? No, that's fine. And you cut it and you just bend it like that. Yeah, bend it and cut it. Can you make a teardrop one for the emerald? Yeah. All right. Let's see her make a teardrop one. Yeah. Y'all guys like my little uh, setup here? <laughs> the kids are having a lot of fun outside. So, you want to do that on camera, dude? Oh, oh, yeah. I was trying to find something a little smaller to wrap it around. Alright, so I find something smaller. Is that the same size? That's yeah, this good. mat is where all this stuff is. Comes. She's using an old nail polish bottle. It's actually rock hard. A really good uh, polish for protecting your stones, but it's pretty expensive. It's like ten bucks, and it's really thick. And it, <laughs> how long does that thing last us? 
maybe like two rounds of electro forming and each round is like 10, 15 stones usually. That's too small? No, that's good because it's for that little emerald. Oh, okay. Yeah, so we got a teardrop. Good deal. Um, so I got two of those. Do you think, do you see any of those I can use for uh, any more circles or? One, I guess we can do one more. Uh, that's fine, dude. It's not too curved right there. We can fix it in a little bit. Yeah, I'll fix it. Uh, any more that we can do in the circles there? Um, I don't want to have to. We're sending these all to Daytona, so I'm just trying to have a little bit of variety. Not too much of the same thing. I don't see. Uh, I don't see anything else. Maybe the red jet. Uh, we have the red jasper, the emerald. Cool, no. Yeah, the red one yeah. is cool in a circle. And that that's that's it right there. I have another circle, a bigger one you can cut down. Really All hard. right, guys, we're gonna go ahead and uh, move over to the workbench here and start gluing some bells. Okay, I'm back. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I make my rings real quick. I take one of these steel mandrels. I got it off at um, Amazon, I think for like 13 bucks, 10, 13 dollars. Uh, it came with this, a ring sizer, and the ring uh, loops to put on your fingers to see what ring size you are. Uh, so when you do it, say I'm gonna, like this time, I'm gonna make a size six ring. You gotta go a size below, because when you wrap this around, it's gonna expand and be a little bigger than what you intend to on here. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna hold it right here, or like a space under that six. And it's always good to label your, your mandrel here. Me and Emily went ahead and used those loops we got and just put it on here and just labeled each one because it doesn't come labeled, I don't know why. I guess like the etchings take away the, um, from this being so not, you know what I mean? So you can, it won't hit notches and wrap around the wrong way. And when you wrap it, you want this to remain flat. I went ahead and flattened this bell on my steel block. So get it right here. And just come around slow. And then come around again. Make sure you're flat. And just like that. Now you see? And then what I like to do is I'll grab this just to make sure I have the right size. As you can see, it's a size six. This also came in the package, this thing. So it's a size six. So you come here, you get your cutters. I got these in, I think I, I got these at Harbor Freight. And we all know about Harbor Freight. <laughs> and you see that where that point is right there, like kind of where it peaks, that's where you want to put your cutter at and cut all the way through, just like that. And boom, you have a size six ring. Just bend it back in shape. No harm, no foul. It's pretty true, it's nice. All right, let me go set this aside and I'll get you on the floor, I'm gonna show you guys how to make some uh, bars like these. Like how I did with this cross, I'm gonna show you how to make these bar things. They're pretty cool, they're done right. All right, and here we are guys. I'm gonna show you how I make my little bars. Um, this is a, about a six, I think this is a six gauge, but you can use an eight gauge too. Basically, we're gonna throw it on this steel block, flatten it away. I'm gonna flatten it with this side first. So it's about right there. And then I'm gonna flip this around and make some nice hammer marks on there and give it a little bit of texture. Kind of like this. I don't like to waste uh, anything. This was off of a, I make bracelets too. This was off a strip of cuffs I had made. So I'm gonna flatten this out too and reuse this. All right, let's hit up the time lapse. back I went ahead and got these bars made and made these little bells out of 12 gauge that just slide right over the bar like that 
and you just attach it right there. Just do a little dop of glue, brush off the baking soda, and conduct it. Conduct paint, it'll electroform right to the bar. And just put two on each side. I was working on this design here. Go ahead and show you that. Check out this design. It's my uh, fire agate, and I put like a piece of quartz, piece of quartz, and the fire agate in the middle, and the smoky quartz. So I thought that was pretty cool. I think I'm just gonna drill a hole in each of these corners, and then after I electroform it, uh, put jumps in them after that. But I thought this was a pretty cool design. I'm pretty sure someone will love it. It matches up, it's real cohesive and nice. All right, guys, we got a lot of work to do. Um, I got to protect all these malachite with nail polish. I also have to um, glue every single one of these bells. Let me get my camera. I have to glue every single one of these bells. Uh, like I said, do nail polish on all the malachite. I have to get the, the pieces that I'm going to put in these hoops in these hoops. And I might have to use some epoxy sculpt to kind of fill in the gaps too. So long road ahead. Um, let's go ahead and get some work done. Look at that. I went ahead and glued all the bells on. Everything's ready. All I have to do now is protect with some nail polish. Uh, just the malachite, the lapis, and yeah, that's it. Just the malachite and the lapis. And some malachite rings here too. I got these pieces of jersey. I think they would look nice, like something like that. Yeah. Really nice statement piece. I really like this one. It's like nice and dainty, this one right here. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, these aren't glued on yet. Before I glue them on, I'm gonna go ahead and protect the backs of them with the nail polish and then glue it on there. So I still gotta do that. And then after I do that, we should be about ready for painting. All right, I'm gonna shoot off to the time lapse and do some protecting with that. I'm gonna try this uh, dollar store top coat. Cause this is, this is like $9 right here, eight or $9. And it only lasts about 20 to 25 stones. So I'm really trying to find something a little bit more affordable because when I make big, I used to make big batches like this almost every day. I slowed down a little bit ever since I started doing my lapidary work. So, uh, yeah, these don't last me at all. I used to have to buy like two of these a week. And I also do like bracelets and uh, I used to do like 50, 60 rings at a time. So I've, I've kind of slowed down a lot more and I'm focused on quality and like doing uh, only hand polished pieces and stuff. And they sell for more, they look better and people really love them. But all right, let me start protecting with nail polish. I got all my pieces sealed up nice and sealed with the nail polish extra sealed with this oh yeah on this one I'm gonna take these two little epoxy balls and glue them on each side to kind of give it that accent like I did with this one and those will end up just looking like balls of copper. So I need to do that for that. But again, for the graphite paint, the shell hub, we get this. Oh, first, mix it up nice and good. And pour it in. And I'll do one with you guys on camera. And then we get the paintbrush here, dust it off a little bit. Now let's see which one am I gonna do first. I'll do this fire agate. So come right here, 
and I'll get that top. Let's see it. It's pulling away a little bit, but we'll just stick with it. Looking good, looking good. I'm pretty sure I got nail polish on the jump, so I'm gonna go ahead and paint the whole jump. Here comes Emily. I hear her stomping away. And since there's no nail polish on the side, it's gonna stick perfectly. So we're just gonna go along, border all the sides up. Emily's actually gonna come and help me out and get this process done faster. All of this jewelry is on its way to Daytona to some really, really cool people. I cannot thank them enough for allowing us to put our jewelry in their shop. It's such a blessing, such, such a blessing. And here is Emily, my help. I'll catch you guys when I get all these done. Alright guys, we have everything sealed. We put latex on all the pieces. I have them all hanging here, drying off. Two coats of latex on each one. We need a graphite paint. Everything's looking mighty good. I do, let's zoom over here. I do have a piece here. I'm getting this custom ring ready. We've got a custom ring in the bath right now. Let's take a peek. It is a Malachite ring. I started it off this morning. Whenever you put, oh yeah, let's go check it out. Whenever you put one ring in the bath by itself, it usually finishes, camera's going a little crazy. It usually finishes in about uh, six hours. But yeah, that one's already done. It's all sealed up. But all right. All those pieces in that tank. There's about 15 of them. They fit perfectly. Now when you got a big one like this, it's probably going to take a day or two, probably a good 36 hours. Alright, I'll see you guys tomorrow night. Alright, it is 6 in the morning, just got done running a batch for our next live show on Thursday. Before I go to sleep, these puppies are done. We'll pull these out, put the new ones in. Hey, don't stop, guys. Let's do it. I'm gonna get some rest and I'll be back uh, about five hours. Right, so we got the jewelry. Let's take a couple of peeks. Let's see, oh, look at that. Wow. Stunning. Ooh, that is heat. I still got to take all the nail polish remover off and grind this up. That is some heat. How about this malachite? That is some high quality malachite. This makes me really happy. Man. I'm off the fire agate piece. Look at that. Beautiful, huh? All right. Oh, Gotta see the emerald. 
Beautiful. Oh yeah, check this one out. I like taking the latex seats off. <gasps> and how about the accents? Did the accents come out? Oh man. <laughs> Stunning. <laughs> And this is why I love electro forming. Man, what a stunning piece. I could cry right now. All right, I gotta do another one. I keep on wanting to, oh. oh. Oh, God. These have gotta be my best pieces so far, dude. All right. <laughs> Let me go ahead. Man, I have a fight crying a little bit. <laughs> Might as well just open them all. There's not that many left. Oh, look at that ring. These came out way better than I thought. Beautiful Malachi ring. They're gonna look so good polished up. Oh, here's something Emily did. Oh, didn't quite. Every once in a while that'll happen. Every once in a while. But yeah, this is a faceted amethyst. It's all right. We'll just have to redo this one. But every once in a while that, that'll happen. Gosh, look at these pieces. Oh, <laughs> that lapis, boy. Another fire. Here is that red jasper. Alright, let me get these cleaned up. Oh, I almost forgot one. Here's one too. <laughs> Alright, let me get these cleaned up. And we'll really show them off. Oh, thank guys. Ooh, I like it. I have a surprise. I got like 30 more pieces I did. <laughs> so let's get these cleaned up. Here we are. Check out that fire at you. She is shining. Ooh, -wee. me and Emily tag teamed on the grindage here. Grinded to a good polish. That's the fire agate. Here's the other fire agate we did. Keep it simple, nice little button. Look at that, folks. God, all these are for sale, too. Look at this. <laughs> that Malachite ring is sick. Oh my goodness. So fat. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> like. That might be thumbnail worthy. Beautiful. Look at this one. Nice and dainty. You like my two copper shears? Look at that. Beautiful. And get ready. I made it happen. I put two pieces of Druzy and that Malachi Chrysocola in the middle. Oh man. Emily's right here behind me working on a few pieces. This, babe, this is probably my favorite one, right? This. 
No, this uh, Malachite Crystal Cola with the Druzy. Mm. One of a kind, guys. No one has this. Ooh, we that's smoking. Here goes another Malachite. Sitting nice. That is some fire, dude. Gosh. Check out the lapis lazuli. Lapis lazuli. Lapis. Look at that border. Ooh, that back is blinded and shining. I love it. I love keeping the backs raw just because of that. Just how cool it looks. And we grow up. <laughs> Beautiful. Can you see the pie right in there? Yeah. Check out this one. Ooh. That butt chordial. Excuse me, Batriodo. Look at that Batriodo style. Ridge. <sighs> this is so pretty. And I kept the back too. I didn't, you know, I can't hide that. Didn't want to hide all that beautiful stuff. All those blues. It reminds me of like a baboon face, that blue. Well, it is from the Congo. Are baboons in the Congo? Uh, the button. I love this little button. Button. It's like, reminds me like of a lava lamp or something. Nice tight little border. I did a heavy jump on it just to give it like some statement to it. Mm -hmm. And gorgeous. <clears throat> Look at that piece. This malachite is sick too. The wavy wave. Goodness. Flaming hot. And the emerald. The emerald sitting a little slanted. But I like it like that. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, here's another Malachi ring. So, and if you've ever wondered what this is, it's a Malachite Crystal Cola. All right, I'm just happy now. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, next time, I got a lot of um, opals I need to cut. I know, I know, I drew this opal last time, so I'm gonna have to do this next time. We are having a live sale tomorrow at 6:45 p.m. Central. Um, I'll go ahead and drop my Facebook link down so you can drop by. Also, like I said, all of these are for sale. Just, uh, drop in the comments if you're interested. I have plenty of jewelry for sale at all times. And, um, yeah, we'll be doing this again very soon. Actually, we are. Uh, like I said, I have a whole nother tank going right now. And um, it just don't stop. It never stops. This is my life. This was locally lost. The lapidary. You guys have a great day or night. And I will see you on the next one. I'm out.